Hello, welcome to my other show. My name is Susan Rushton and this is People of the Symphony. This is the show in which I'm privileged to interview people who belong to one of my favorite Auburn organizations, the Auburn Symphony. If you're interested in learning about the Auburn Symphony, please go online to auburnsymphony.com or give them a call at 530-823-6683 or stop in uh, in Suite 102 at the State Theater to their office or email them, office at auburnsymphony.com. And uh, please, please do that because we have a wonderful organization in the Auburn Symphony. Today my guest is Stephanie Rush, who is a French horn player, one of the several French horn players. Stephanie, how long have you been with the symphony? You know, I've tried to record that and derive it, but um, I'm going to, I've estimated about 13 years. 13 years. Yes. What, what, why did you, why did you, and you live in Roseville. Yes. How did you hear about the symphony? A good friend of mine, Fred Balcom, Okay. He was the section leader not too long ago, and he actually recruited me for subbing and filling in on parts that were larger than the normal section count. And um, so I did that for a while, and then there was an opening, and he recruited me to join the group. Why did you, why did you say, yes, I want to join the group? Because the symphonic idiom is my favorite. What do you mean by symphonic idiom, Stephanie? <laughs> The, um, the musical form and how it expresses what it has to express. I know I'm being kind of abstract. But no, 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 that's fine. <laughs> Music is, is abstract. That's great. Yeah. What do you mean? So let's keep well, going. Well, you know, um, one, of the, one of the things that music, musicians are most attracted to, I think, is the ability to express themselves in ways that words cannot express. Mm -hmm. The French horn is like that for me. And... Um, I, I, ever since I was a very young child and didn't even know what a French horn was, I, I felt a, a kinship to it, the sound. It, it allowed for me to experience and feel and express later when I took it on things that words couldn't express, facial expressions couldn't express, nothing could express but the French horn. <laughs> and the same thing is true with the symphonic sound, uh -huh. idiom, and um, all of the things that are idiomatic of the expression of the symphony. Okay. So um, when I, I'm, that's my favorite um, arena to perform in. I love a lot, all kinds of music, but my very favorite and the one that speaks most to my heart is the symphonic okay. music. Why, what was it about, what is it? Well, no, what was it about the uh, French horn that, that drew you when you were young, specifically? Because there are other instruments. Yes, there are. I actually started on violin to get out of class. <laughs> and it worked, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. And uh, they wouldn't let us in fifth grade, that was when I was 10, they wouldn't let us take a wind instrument up yet in mm. that school. And I really wanted to, but I didn't know which one, and I just waited. I was keen on the trombone because uh -huh. of the slide whistle and just all that slide action was just yeah. so impressive. And for a kid, it was very visual. Um, but I had a strange experience. When I was playing my violin, the trombones in the back were playing with their eyes crossed. And I asked them, why do you, why do you play with your eyes crossed? And they said, that's how you play trombone. So I thought to myself, not trombone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I believe them being 10 years old. <laughs> so then I went from violin to um, trumpet, and then clarinet, and then saxophone, and then French horn. Then they let you play the French horn. Well, I, I actually moved from San Diego up to Mendocino, and I was really itching to play more challenging parts than third trumpet in uh, junior oh, high. Just, just third trumpet. <laughs> yeah, okay. and the guys that were playing first just really didn't have the experience I had had from San Diego training just because it was a bigger city. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I consulted the band director and he, uh, he said, well, how would you like to play first horn? <laughs> there were no French horn parts uh -huh. players, so okay. I, I took it up and um, I fell in love with it. Okay. And I, I had a like good year of 
um, playing that and trumpet, but really falling, in falling love. for the horn. Okay. And then it got hard. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I wanted uh, to quit. But uh, the teacher said, my band director said no. And so I played wrong notes. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> yes. But he still made me do it. And then I got over that slump okay. and chose the horn because of the symphonic literature and how it really called to me. Okay. So oh, pick, pick, let's, let's see it. And, and let me, can you, can you play a, a, a few notes and, and, uh, and let, us, let me hear what it sounds like, please? <laughs> oh, sure. I can do a few notes. I'm blowing air through it. Thank you. Because that's how I check if there's condensation in it. Okay. Another word for that is spit. spit. <laughs> okay. And a lot of us brass players, we just say spit happens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But anyway, um, there is a little water in there. <laughs> but so th the water will impede the sound. But how do you, and so you get it out I of there? I can drain it if you don't mind it being drained on your floor. <laughs> no. Oh, that's okay. that's. Uh, that's fine. And I so, don't mind. Can you so hear it? You have the spit valve, right? Yeah. Yes, there is a spit valve. Not all horns have them. It's right here. Mine's right here. Okay. And you can't really see it from this side. <laughs> Traditionally, though, horns don't have spit valves. And you have to follow the tubing to drain the water. I'm tightening the mouthpiece so it won't fall off. Thank you. Because you actually turn it like this. Ah. And it goes through the and tubes. Comes and out it comes the out the valve. And I don't mind. I'm a horn player. And he, you can see, there yeah. it is. Yeah. I don't mind. I mean, okay. Some people get grossed out, but you know, you got to <laughs> learn to live with that if you're a horn player. Yes. Okay, now it's gone. So um, uh, I can tell you a little bit about how most people pick up a horn and they want to play a note and they go, there's no sound. I thought you just blow through it, but you know, you actually have to create a vibration with your lips. <laughs> That's what you do. So you just do that in the mouthpiece. And that noise that you hear gets extended and sent out through the end Broadcast, of the Broadcast, okay. Mm-hmm. Now, it's just like any other morsel. It's good to warm it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But All right. So that's basically um, a, a few notes. And I note that... You have your hand in there. Yes, I do. So wh why do you have your hand in there, Stephanie? This is probably the most asked question. And basically, the answer in short, um, short nutshell form is that it controls what's called timbre. The, 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 the timbre, which timbre. is like the color of the tone. Okay. And it's spelled T I M B R E. Okay. And then um, it also controls pitch, as you were so talking about earlier. So you can decide earlier. the pitch by where you put your hand. It actually helps you control fine tuning of a pitch. It, you, you don't use it to change the pitch, you use it to adjust the pitch. Okay. So um, where you're, you're changing pitch with your, your lips and your valves, and your hand. No. Yes, that's a fine, fine, fine tune. So, okay. for example, no hand, and you listen, well, there's a few things, but here's two notes. I'll play two different notes. Okay. They're two different pitches. No hand. All right. Change the pitch. I can change, a fine tune the pitch with my hand. Sort of like a, um, uh, a mute, using a, a mute yes. in a way. A mute changes texture, oh. tem timbre. If wow. You, it's like, so there's one thing you can do with a horn that no other instrument I know of off the top of my head does quite the same way, and that's called stopping the horn, kind of like organ stops but totally different, and that changes the texture. So here's open horn. <laughs> And they use that in um, like uh, scary movies all the time. Kids start going.